viewer outfit because, well, everyone has a reviewer outfit. Tell me what you think. Whew. Whew. So, what do you think? Um, well, there's the Beatles, so I approve of the shirt. Nice fedora, too. My, uh, Are you kidding me? That freaking Eskimo just stole my YouTube outfit. I mean, did it even occur to him that there was another Thomas Wooden Railway reviewer on the internet with a Beetle shirt and a fedora? Come on, Eric! Come on! Vinny, will you shut up? I'm trying to watch Judge Judy. Look, Ringo. This Eric Pierre 53 guy stole my freaking outfit. Whoa, you're right. There's no way that could be a coincidence. This guy's just trying to become me. That's fantastic. Now put me down. Okay, okay. Jeez. This isn't right. I'm one of the best reviewers in this community, and there's no way, no way, that I'm gonna be beat by this guy. I have to get my revenge on this copycat, but how? Well, don't ask me. I'm just a talking cat, you know? Nothing special here. Today, I, Vinny Smith, so I'll begin a quest, a quest to find my individuality, my distinction, and most of all, my humanity. Humanity. That word should have a new meaning to us today, Ringo. Can't you just let me out already? No, Ringo. We can't be consumed by our petty differences any longer. We'll be united in our hatred for Eric Pierre. Perhaps it's fate that today is a, well, it's Monday, but that we'll be once again fighting for our freedom, not from tyranny, oppression, persecution, or worst of all, Google, but from identity annihilation. We're fighting for our right to live, our right to exist, our right to survive in this dark and hateful world known as the internet. And should we win the day, Monday will no longer be known as just another weekday. But as the day that we at Mad Frog Productions cried out in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on, Ringo. We're going to survive. We're going to show the world that I'm not just another Thomas Wooden Railway reviewer on the internet, but that I am THE Thomas Wooden Railway reviewer on the internet. And nobody Nobody is going to tell me otherwise, especially not some stupid Canadian. That's it. That's it. Some stupid Canadian. Oh my god, Ringo, you're a genius. What? Eric Pierre is a stupid Canadian, but he's also a great foe. My mortal enemy. If I'm to vanquish him, then I must match him. I must find the other Canadian. The other Canadian? Yes. One who knows more about reviewing Thomas Wooden Railway items than anyone on the planet. Well, at least the older items, but I do truly believe that he is the only one that can help me in succeeding to defeat Eric Pierre. Sadly, Ringo, I believe we must pass ways, but I think that you've significantly contributed to my life, and I thank you for it. We will meet again, I promise, but until that fateful day, I bid you adieu, Mr. Kitty. Now, off to Canada! Oh, jeez, finally, I have to take the biggest dump right now, you guys.
from Wisconsin. is traveling by map. The Muppets make it look so easy. Kids these days. Uh, Mr. Wooden Railway Reviews? You are a weary traveler in a strange land, and yet you have come in search of the absurd, the ridiculousness, and for what? Uh, I don't know. Of course you know. Try looking at it another way. Well, I came in search of you. The one. Did you, or did you come in search of yourself. I, uh... Temet Nusk. Huh? It is Latin. It means know thyself. Isn't that a line from the Matrix? Look, it does not matter. The point is, do you know who you are? Well, yeah, I'm Vinny Smith. No, 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 I know you know who you are, but I'm asking you, do you know who you are? Look, I have no idea what you You are Vinny Smith, but you are also a Thomas Winrow reviewer, no? How did you know that? I know everything there is to know about Thomas Winrow, even before Roy Wilson founded the company in 1992. Even before Reverend Wilbert Audrey wrote Thomas the Tank Engine. Even before Audrey was born. Even before trains were invented. Even before wood existed. I have always known. Whoa. You are Vinnie Smith, a blonde haired child from California who wears a fedora. That is how you exist physically. But who are you metaphysically? Well, I'm a. A troubled young man, yet full of intelligence. Courage and ambition. Well, I don't get this. How how do you know all this? I told you I know everything about Thomas Wooden Railway. I uh I also watch your videos from time to time. Wait, really? Shh! Don't tell anyone. You'll spoil my mythical quality. Oh, yeah. Of course, no 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 problem. I found off. Now then. I have been making wooden rare reviews since the dawn of time. I've traveled this vast world in search of rare and unusual items. And in my travels, I have learned many things about man. Did you know that the ancient Egyptians believe that when you die and descended to heaven, you were asked two questions. One, did you find joy? In other words, have you found joy in your life? Yeah, I, I have. Ah, but the second question really tested a man's character. Did you bring joy? In other words, did you bring joy to other people's lives? So, not to be rude or anything, but what does this have to do with Thomas Wood Railway? 
everything. Everything? Everything. Remember I said on the outside you were a blonde haired child from California who wears a fedora? Imagine if that was the only thing I said about you, or saw in you. Just a regular boy from the United States. That's quite bland, is it not? Mm, right. But if I said that you are an intelligent, vicious, and courageous young man, it would be more insightful, would it not? And that, my son, is the whole point of reviewing Thomas Wooden Railway. One can just sit there and review an item for its physical qualities. Flat magnets or round magnets, wooden funnel or plastic funnel, staples or no staples. But why? Huh? Why? There's nothing wrong with doing this, but where's the point of view? The point of view. When you read or watch a film review, if one were to literally just sit there and explain what happened in the film, it would be a film synopsis, would it not? Vinny, it is about what you see in the item. What does it mean to you? What values does it attain? What does it mean to the children who were first given it, or the young adults who reminisce on the time they spent with it? That is why you must understand this in the deepest possible way. And to do that, you must review that. What? This? Well, this is just a stick. Ah, you have fallen to the pratfall of seeing it for its physical qualities. There's no extra meaning to it. No? And why not? Because it's a stick. And that will be your muse, my boy. Someday, when you are ready, you will see the bigger picture. You will see beyond its apparent meek status and realize its true meaning. But that, I am afraid, I cannot show you. You must see it for yourself. Well, how am I going to do that? I will train you in the arts of the Thomas Wooden Railway and the review. I will teach you all the knowledge I possess. And with great patience and ambition, someday, Vinny, you will attain great power. And become the greatest Thomas Wooden Railway reviewer of all time. Whoa! So, when does my training begin? Right now. The first rule of Thomas Wynn Railway is to know when to choose between the exception and the expected. The what? Exceptionalism is the exception, my friend. People tend to want to see the current or trendy, the expected. Well, how does that apply to Thomas Wynn Railway? Well then. Who has the most popular Thomas Winware reviews on YouTube right now? Uh, you? <laughs> yeah, I wish. <laughs> um, but no. It's Josh, J. Louvier. You see, Josh provides reviews of the newest, current Thomas Winrowy items. He has a large following of mainly children and adults who are watching his videos to see if the items he reviews are worth the purchase or not. You see, Josh is the middleman between the consumer and the producer. He eases the class struggle. Hmm. I, however, am the exception. I review rare, older, more nostalgic Thomas Wynn Rally items for a smaller, yet more concentrated following. Almost like a cult following, if you will. You see, these people not only like the stories that I provide, but they like to see the items as having gained some kind of value. And they also like to see that the items have now become worth a lot of money so that then they can go on eBay and list them for ridiculous amounts of prices so they can make all this money and then make it impossible for someone like me to buy new items to review. Roberts! <sighs> I'm sorry. But anyway, watch carefully. Now, which item represents the expected, and which item 
represents the exception. Go. Well, the aquarium cars are a fairly new release, which means they'd be an expected review of a channel making one to two minute reviews on the newer items of the Thomas Wooden Railway. Nothing much to say, I guess. Excellent. Go on. Now, the troublesome brake van is the exception because it was a rare item released in the early years and retired shortly after. That would be worthy of a good 20-minute in-depth review, talking about how fascinating it is to our culture. Citing sources from Immanuel Kant's Critique of Pure Reason and Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel's The Phenomenology of Spirit, while also criticizing today's manufactured wooden railway items by citing Karl Marx's Das Kapital. Okay, whatever. Excellent. You have now mastered the first rule of Thomas Wooden Railway. Oh, sweet! But the second rule is much harder to grasp. Uh-oh. How to deal with competition. Now this sort of railway repair would make an excellent original review, would it not? Well, sure it eh. would. It wouldn't. Because guess what? Several users have already reviewed it. Hmm. Let's see. Well, there's Josh, Mr. MPS, Key Grade 24, the God himself, peace be upon him. And even I've reviewed it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I've reviewed the Sword of Rare Repair. And guess what? Out of all those reviews, mine has the most amount of views. <laughs> can, can you believe that? I'm finally popular in something. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but, uh, uh, but anyway, doing a review of the Sword of Rare Repair would not be entirely original. Now, Granted, because he is such an interesting, unique character, there are a lot of things to say about him, so that's okay. It's just that when you're touching a character that is very familiar and cherished, that's when you have to be careful. So, for instance, Edward will bring us to our third rule, authentic form of expression and editorial point of view. Look, it's Edward. <laughs> we all know Edward, don't we? That's not authentic. What do you mean, not authentic? Friday. Today we're going to be taking a look at the kind-hearted number two engine. See? You were not being authentic. Well, yeah, it was just a coincidence. I don't want to hear. The audience has already heard what Josh has to say, because he uploaded his video first. And now, you are copying what he said. And to the audience, they think you're a thief. What? Just because we said the same thing? Yes, you must be original, otherwise people will think you're a hack. But I'm not a hack. They think you are. Who? The audience does. With a popular character such as Edward, you must find a way to give an authentic point of view of his character, his history, and his meaning to you. Otherwise, you are just rehashing someone else's thoughts and not giving a true review. Fine, you want an authentic review of Edward? Yes! Do you? Yes! Alright, I hate Edward! What? You what? Yeah, you heard me. I hate Edward! Why on earth do you hate Edward? Because I used to love Edward, and now he sucks! He used to be such a noble, honorable character, full of truth and compassion. He was the one that the angels could turn to for advice during difficult times. He was the one that that told Percy what a deputation was. The one who helped Gordon up the hill, simply out of the kindness in his heart. Or smoke box. Heck, he basically raised Thomas to be the engine that he would become. One who knew how to handle trucks, one who knew how to run his own branch line, and one who knew how to start his own television show. And do you know? Do you know what became of Edward? He became an old fart, that's what. Have you seen Edward Strikes Out? He was a total jerk to Rocky. Granted, Rocky is a pointless character created only for merchandising, but still, Edward is the one who would condemn that type of cruel behavior, not promote it. <sighs> Ever since then, he simply was not the same. He had fallen off his high estate and was disgraced. I was disgraced to even be a fan of the show after that. That, that was amazing. You thought it was good? That was an impeccable review of Edward, full of sound and, and fury, but actually signifying something. 
Wow, I mean, that wasn't even really a review, more of a rant. It was miraculous, Vinny. And it changes everything. Come on, we've got a lot of work to do. but judging by the fact that that was the year that they stopped updating the wheels, and the fact that Fergus was included in the 2004 DVD release of Thomas and the Really Brave Engines, I'm gonna say... 06? Nothing's gonna ever keep you down, not the best. Oh, wow. Nothing's gonna ever keep you down, not the best. Oh, wow. Nothing's gonna ever keep you down. Oh, wow. Nothing's gonna ever keep you down. Young grasshopper, you have been doing very well. You should be very proud of yourself. Thanks. There is now only one more test in your training that you must complete in order to become a true Thomas Winrary reviewer. What's that? You must do a crossover review. With who? <laughs> You? Oh, thank you, sir! To do this, though, I must transform into my YouTube persona. I don't really like it, but hey, it gets views. What's up, Vinny? 
Uh. Hi, Rob. Oh, by the way, I'm excellent. Thanks for asking. Come on, let's go inside. I'm freezing. Come on. Well, here it is. So, what do you think? It's more awesome than I dreamed it would be. Yeah, whatever. Oh, by the way, here's Topham. Oh! Hello, sir. Nice to finally meet you. Nice to finally meet you, young man. Brilliant reviews, by the way. Wow! I'm honored, thank you. Yeah, don't mention it. Keep up the good work. So this is the room. Yeah, it's, uh, not too bad. No, I'm, uh, not too crazy about the paneling. Well, yeah, but it's THE train room. Wow. A room is what you make of it. Anyway, uh, I guess we should get started on this review. So, what's this review even going to be of? Hmm. I don't know. First things first. How did you do that? Gold dust, Vinny. Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. Oh, yeah! Uh... Using that in the first place would have saved a lot of time. How am I even talking to you right now? Well, Vinny, to answer your question, um, what you did is you just, you know, shot all your footage saying your lines, and I shot all my footage saying my lines, and then using the editing program, I just put them together to make it feel like a, you know, cohesive story that's happening at the same time when it really isn't. That's how. Right, right, yeah. Hello, this is Mr. Connector Fan 1406 And Wooden Barrel Reviews! Here with a crossover review! Woo! And today's item is going to be... Henry the Green Engine. I have the 1994 version of Henry, and then Mr. Conductor Fan has a bunch of newer versions, though the 1994 version is the best. Pfft, geezer. Show off! Henry was first introduced in 1992 along with the other classic Thomas Wernerly characters. He originally had flat magnets, staples, and a wooden funnel. This 1994 version has round magnets and no staples. While his face is a nice rendition of his character, he has a gauntly thin boiler and the same tender as Gordon, instead of having his proper Fowler tender. In 1998, Learning Curve updated their engines with plastic funnels and coal, which is the version that I have here today. It has very few changes from the 1994 model, but is nothing compared to the changes made in 2002, when almost all of the main characters were changed completely. Henry was no exception. My model is... <laughs> What's with the paint job? <laughs> this like was done by a nine-year-old. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't have asked that. What's in it? Yeah, I found out the hard way too. This version of Henry had a larger boiler, which meant a different and bigger face. Many details were added, and he was finally given the correct shaped tender after 10 years. Rob, do you want to tell them about the next version? I'm, uh, I'm just gonna sit over there. Okay. Um. All right. Uh, 
Anyway, in 2011, Learning Curve updated their characters so that they could resemble their CGI counterparts. Fortunately, uh, neither of us own the version of Henry that was, uh, let's just say, bred or inbred from this decision because, um, yeah, they never really got the concept of CGI faces down. I mean, just look at this 2011 Thomas. Reeks of nightmare fuel. You know, I know this is going to be a really unpopular opinion, but I just got to get it out. I honestly think the CGI Thomas is one of the ugliest children's characters ever. <sighs> When Mattel absorbed Learning Curve in 2013, they finally managed to produce accurate renditions of the CGI counterparts. Though I still think they're pretty ugly. I'm sorry. This is the current incarnation of the character. And, at least in looks, this model isn't half bad. I mean, yes, the running plate and bogies are plastic, but overall this version is very good. The boiler was made slightly larger than it was, and the corners were rounded to prevent weathering. Eh, the old one's still the best. Actually, I beg to differ. The pre-2002 Henry has a boiler that's way too small, and the tender is completely misshapen. The later version is okay, but it lacks the realism of the 2013 model. Vinny, that's the point. Thomas Wooden Railway is supposed to be simplistic, not realistic. It's supposed to just barely represent the characters they're trying to represent. <sighs> Don't make me get the troublesome brain fan argument out again. You really won't shut up about that, will you? Never! It's the greatest item ever produced for any child, ever! Yeah, 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 it's not that special. <sighs> ah, I see. You're just jealous, aren't you, Minnie? <laughs> Me? Jealous? I've never been jealous. At all. Anyway, whether you own the good Henry, i.e. the old one, the bad one, the new one, or the ugly, it doesn't matter. Any version is great, because Henry's a great character. At least he was. Just like with Edward. Such an honorable, you know, respected character. I mean, especially Henry. You have to remember, in the early years, Henry was physically ill. You know, he struggled to pull trains, even passenger trains, but he desperately wanted to get better. So to prove his worth, he had the fat controller give him special coal, and he pulled the flying kipper to show that he could be a, you know, useful engine, that he couldn't be scrapped. He had to be on the top of that railway. And then what happens? He crashes. He crashes, but he makes a comeback, and he comes back stronger and better than ever. He overcame his illness. He overcame this great obstacle in his life and succeeded. He was a tragic character that succeeded in life. Wow. Probably one of the best characters ever written in children's literature. So, I just want to say, I just want to say this right now. If you do not own a version of Henry, then what is the matter with you? No. Stop this review right now. Right now. Get up, go out to your nearest toy store, Toys R Us, Kmart, Walmart, I don't care where, even eBay, and buy yourself a Henry. Wooden Henry, Trackmaster Henry, Take and Play Henry, I don't care. If you think you can call yourself a Thomas fan and not own a version of Henry, then you are a disgrace! <sighs> yeah, what's the big deal, man? It's only $24 to spend on a toy which you'll probably never, ever play with again. So this is what Thomas does to your head? I'm out. Oh. The point is, Henry is an essential character to own. He's one of Audrey's eight famous engines, and that's good enough for me. This is Mr. Connector Fan 1406 and Wooden Railway Reviews signing out. See you later! Well done, Vinny. You've completed your test. One moment, please.
Now then, Vinny, since we have finished our review, our crossover has come to an end. And so has our training. What? But my training isn't completed! I don't think I can beat Eric and When then... you need me, but do not want me, then I must stay. But, when you only want me, and do not need me, then I must go. But, I wanted you. And besides, that's from Nanny McPhee. <sighs> Whatever. Are all of your philosophical quotes just taken from movies? Look, there's nothing wrong with getting philosophical quotes from movies, alright? I like to binge on Netflix. Big deal! Uh, uh, anyway. Vinny, remember everything I have taught you and you will be just fine. But when will I face Eric? And how will I defeat him? Do not fear Eric, for defeat is merely a state of mind. Remember everything I taught you, and when you face Eric, you will conquer him. When you are ready. When will I be ready? Remember the stick? The stick? You will defeat him with that when you are ready. And now, I must fade away. Wait. Are you dying? Please don't die! No, 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 I'm not dying. <laughs> I'm just being absorbed by this universe. And my teachings and thoughts will live on in you. But, but I need you! No, no. You need yourself, Vinny. I don't understand. Why do you have to go? I'm not going anywhere. I am merely changing into a different form. Do not worry. You will understand someday. But now, I am no longer a man. You're the man now, dog! Is that from the movie Finding Forrester? Yes, starring Sean Connery. Great movie, huh? Yeah, it was, it was. Well, goodbye, Robert. For you, Eric. And this one's for Rob! Well, it was fun. Like, I didn't manage to do a trilogy, but I still got two of my best videos out. Also killed my evil counterpart, scared myself to death with a creepy German commercial, and just had a fun time with my friends. It was also fun to be able to do one last review with Ted before he left. All in all, this was pretty freaking fun. Hello, Eric. Whoa, Vinny, I mean, Mr. Conductor fan. Uh, nice haircut. What are you... <sighs> Cut the crap, Pierre. You know exactly why I'm here. Uh, no. Well, yeah, you're wearing a Beatles shirt in the fedora. 
And what are you wearing? Well, you know, sure enough, do Oh. Yeah! I mean, did it even occur to you once that you stole my outfit? Well, geez, Vinny, I'm really sorry. I honestly didn't mean to. Well, I don't care. I want revenge. Hey, hey, calm down. It was an accident, and I- Shut up! I need to show the world that I will not be beaten so easily. There can only be one Thomas reviewer with a Beatles shirt and a fedora, and it's gonna be me! So you're doing this crossover? Whether you like it or not. Okay, okay, but what are we going to be reviewing? Oh, you'll see. You'll all see. <laughs> Not again. Ooh, fantastic alliteration. Shut up! Okay, there is a reason I'm trying to distance myself from you guys, and currently this is the best way I see fit. You're making a terrible mistake. Ago, he hacked into my video and started rambling about how I stole his outfit or whatever. What's his outfit? Beetle shirt and a fedora. Yeah, you did. I know, I know, I should have checked. But still, he's threatening me and I wanted to check if you had any idea what this was about. And how was he threatening you? With... a crossover. Oh, Eric. Well, I put a deadlock on it, but it's not going to last forever, and I don't know what to do when it breaks. Well, I mean, you, you did kind of steal his outfit. I mean, you, you sort of owe him one after all. What? But he's evil! Well, so are you, in a sense. Turtles, you're not helping! Am I supposed to be? Yes, that's why I call! Sorry, I'm bad at this whole human interaction thing. The years spent in isolation have not equipped me with the tools necessary to comprehend your commonplace speech skills. Well, you seem to be fine right now. Well, I've been studying for seven hours. And you lost it. Darn it. Okay, I'm just gonna go talk to someone else. You get back to your reading, I guess. Bye. Where was I? Oh, there we go. Chapter 73. Getting along with others. Finally! Let's see. Oh, yeah. I would call Ted, but as we all know, he died in a horrific flying car accident. That we must never speak, speak of again! 
Let's see who else is on the list. No. But come on! I need help! This guy's a maniac! Well, then why did you turn to another one for help? Ha ha! Very funny! But please, do you have any advice? Don't try asking me about anything. There you go. Now, leave! I'm busy working on my 12th crossover with Turtles. You know that he hates you, right? I know, isn't it great? God, I'm a terrible person. <sighs> well, shoot, I don't have any other friends. I really need to get that book back from Turtles. <sighs> well, Eric, it's gonna happen. You know what's coming. Any second now, the screen's gonna change and Vinny's gonna appear and scare the crap out of you. But you gotta be prepared because it's always the stupid little things like that that always manage to scare you. But this time, I'm not gonna... Video connection successful. <laughs> Eric, you're back! I was wondering when the Great Wall of Quebec would collapse. What? What are you gonna do? Well, my Canadian counterpart, a review is what I'll be indulging myself into momentarily, and you're gonna help me with it. Is it... a talking engine? No. Battery powered? No. <gasps> Roll a whistle? No. We're reviewing this. Oh! The special engine shed. That's not terrible at all. I know. I don't feel like reviewing something bad today anyhow. Oh yeah, because I felt like reviewing Roll the Whistle, Emily. Hey, you didn't have to review it, but you did. Besides, that Josh guy is one messed up dude. I'm definitely never doing business with him, that's for sure. Hello, this is Mr. Connector Fan 1406 and Eric Pierre 53. Here with a crossover review. <laughs> Deja vu! Go, Go away, away, yes! Aw, you guys are no fun. Can anyone just appear in our Skype call at random? Uh-huh. Oh god, what are you doing here? I don't know. Well, get out of here. No one likes seeing your celebrity face around here. Leave. Suit yourself. Blah, blah, duh. Are there any other unnecessary cameos in here? Um, no. No! No, uh, uh Of course not. Not a single one. Nah, man. <laughs> Why on earth would we do that? That is simply preposterous. How much are we getting paid again? Even I, a talking cat, can't understand this insanity. Exactly. Yeah, what he said. Shut up. <laughs> I'm just... What just happened? Am I supposed to know? Flattens my funnel. And by that I mean I am unaware of the reasoning behind those events. Point is, there don't seem to be any random cameos around here. There must be some mistake. Oh, why would anyone even do that to poor Vinny? Oh, it's the kind of thing that salts my apples, you know what I mean? Okay, good. Let's actually get this review started. <sighs> the special engine shed was introduced in 1993 along with the Thomas Wooden Railway toy line itself. The first model's roof had a chimney and a more triangular roof shape, which was redesigned in 1994 to the version that I have here today. After that change, the item was left practically unaltered until it was discontinued in 2003. On each side of the building, there was a highly detailed painting of a brick wall with bright blue windows and vines crawling up the side. It's highly realistic and rivals the amount of detail found in items today. Clearly, destinations like the paint factory took great inspiration from this classic toy. It's a fairly simple operation. You can put any engine, with or without a tender inside, and the roof can be removed for easier retrieval. The universal applicability of it is really nice. In fact, Learning Curve can be quoted in describing it as a shed for one Donald-sized engine. Wait, so that means... <sighs> yes, Eric. No flying Scotsman. <sighs> Poor guy. I love my tenders. <laughs> Having this item beats the roundhouse in more ways than one. For one, it's smaller, which is easier to store on and off the layout. Second, it's far more realistic in the context of British Railways. And third, if you have a turntable, you can just make your own roundhouse, Tommy style. If you can get your hands on this classic item, do. It's really cool to have several different sheds on your railway, as well as your layout. You can get the 2006 follow-up, the useful engine shed, but it doesn't really have the same effects of nostalgia, realism, or the 100% wooden availability. Jeez, the way you make it sound, it's like some artifact of childhood that should be remembered forever. 
Well, it's a fantastic toy that should be remembered. Yeah, I know, it's great, I love it, but it's not... that special. Not that special? Vinny, it's a piece of cheap hollowed out wood with two crappy stickers on the side. And in the context of the wooden railway, it's great, fantastic, 10 out of 10, but it's not a relic of childhood, that's for sure. How, how could you say such a wicked, heartless thing? Not a relic of childhood? This defines one's childhood! It doesn't how? matter! If you it's know, no one really wants to know anymore. We don't so care. Stop now, that. Vinny! And I don't know how you can... Who's the state, Vinny? Who's the state? Trust me. And go. And prove that you could be Eric. Trust me, Vinny. That's it. I see it. I think I understand now. It all became so... clear. What? What's become clear? Rob was right all along. It was right there in front of me. This stick. To me, it's just a stick, but to someone else it could be anything. Maybe, maybe a little boy used it a long time ago when he found it in a meadow on a bright summer's day, and he used it as a sword carved from the finest of metals. Maybe, maybe it was part of a mother robin's nest and she used it to house her family. Maybe it broke off a giant, a huge oak tree. One that started a little teeny seed. It started as a little seed in the ground. But it grew up to be one of the biggest and strongest beings in the whole forest. One whose branches touched the heavens and the sky. And like a person, just like a person who starts from a tiny seed and grows up to be whatever they want to, to show the world that they have aspirations of their own. They have goals, they have dreams, just like me. Just like the tree, just like the robin, just like that little boy. It all started with a stick. This engine shed is just a shed, but to a character like Thomas, it's his home, it's everything. It's where he rests in preparation for a new day, a new adventure. It's where he dreams by night of becoming a really useful engine, and where he sits dreaming by day of meeting new friends and new possibilities that could occur in his life. And this house. Well, it's just a house, but to me, Vinnie Smith, it's home. It's where I'm loved. It's where I grew up. It's where I make my films. I make them for an audience I can't even see. But I know they're there. Thousands of people love my work. It makes them laugh, it makes them smile, it makes them happy. And I know that this is where, this is where my roots are. This is where I'll start. Just to branch out, just like that tree, just like that kid, just like that bird. We'll go out into the world, we'll do something amazing to become a great reviewer or, or writer or director. And it's this, this has made me discover the true meaning of it all. It's this, Jesus. it's so important. It's so life-changing! I finally discovered the true meaning of the Thomas Wood Railway!
Greetings, Vinny. Hello, my son. Rob, you're alive! Or am I dead? No, oh, don't be silly. You have merely entered a new state of being. Well, what does that mean? It means that you are no longer just another YouTuber. Your evolved knowledge and true understanding of the Thomas Wooden Railway has elevated you to become one with the gods. What? You mean I'm one of you guys now? Yes, my boy. You, from this day and forevermore, are indoctrinated into the Thomas Wooden Railway Hall of Fame. Congratulations. My god. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, thank you, Vinny. I always knew you could do it, Vinny. You always had it in you. And although my time has come full circle, yours is just beginning. The world is your oyster. So is it, um, is it, is it just you two up here in, in heaven or wherever we are? No, um, there's more around here. And the reward you shall receive for your unprecedented actions is one that will be unrivaled by anyone for centuries. Oh, but you've already given me so much. I mean, I couldn't possibly ask for... Another crossover. Oh. Uh... With, uh, with you? No. With him. Hello, Vinny. <laughs> Let the new dawn begin. Enterprising Engine 93 here. Bye. 
I didn't even take part in that, that just sort of happened, odd to say the least.